hello and welcome back. It's been a while. So uh, today we're working on the 360 for the 1968 Dodge Dart. And uh, we're gonna get the cylinder heads on it here. So the cylinder heads have been completely rebuilt. Uh, new valves, springs, everything. But the one problem is, so these are number 308 casting heads. So these are, in theory, according to most of the Chrysler magazines and stuff, the best flowing 360 LA head. Uh, the issue with these is, if you're going to run them on an older vehicle, they have these air uh, injection ports. Now, usually they're full of carbon and crap and whatever, but the problem is you'll have exhaust gases leak through here. So what you have to do is, uh, I drilled them out to take a uh, 5 16 24 fine thread set screw, and then I just loctited them in there. And that solves that problem for us. So our block is pretty much ready to go, right? Um, I'll wipe down the deck surface, make sure it's nice and clean. I'll make sure there's no crap in the cylinders. Um, but other than that, and the only other thing, I was thinking about it, and I don't remember if I mentioned it when we put lifters in this thing. Uh, these pre-Magnum LA engines that have roller lifters, and the Magnum engines with roller lifters, on the side of the lifter, there's a pin, right? The pin has to face this way, towards the camshaft when you put the lifters in. If you flip them the other way, you're going to have a tick. So I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I can't remember. But uh, that's something to keep in mind when you're doing one of these engines. Okay, so with the surface of the deck clean, we can take our new head gaskets. And we can lay them in position here. So I have this one upside down. And these are composite. So with that, the next thing we can do is take and actually seat the cylinder head onto the block. Okay, so watch your fingers. What I usually do is I just kind of roll it so we can get the one dowel pin in, and then your other dowel pins in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is start putting our head bolts in. Now, Chrysler states that on the threads of the head bolts, you don't need any Loctite or anything like that. What you do need to do is lightly oil the threads of the bolts. And contrary to popular belief, they're not torqued to yield on the LA engine, so you can, in fact, reuse your cylinder head bolts. And in an application where you're not overly high performance, there's absolutely nothing wrong with reusing your cylinder head bolts, provided that you check to make sure they're not stretched or necked. Ours are good to go so we can go ahead and use them. Now, when you go to put the head bolts in, you'll notice that there are two that are gonna be longer than the rest.
Okay, so I'm gonna snug those up by hand and then we can begin our torque sequence. Okay, so our cylinder head bolts get torqued to 105 foot-pounds, according to our Kaiser manual. And we start from the center and work our way out. Okay, and that is our cylinder head torqued. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is install the push rods. So these are brand new uh, made in the USA melling push rods. Um, we're not gonna use a stock uh, rocker arm system on this engine, but the one we have will work with our stock style push rod. So that's what we've purchased. So prior to installing them, uh, I got a thing about, I'm always worried about dry starting an engine. And even though I'm going to prime the engine and ensure that I get oil to the top end of it, I still, I don't know, paranoid, I guess. So I always uh, lubricate the ends of the new push rods before I install them in the block. just to give them a fighting chance. Now we will go through the correct break-in procedure of this engine when we do get to that point. Uh, that probably won't be for quite a while though because we have, well, a lot of other parts of the car that need to be dealt with before that. which I will uh, give you a bit of an update on the car this week also, because it is progressing quite well at the body shop. So rather than bore you to death, as you can see they're coated, that's, that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll finish doing this side, I'll do the other side, and we'll get all the push rods in. Okay, so this is what we have for this engine. Um, this came from a friend of ours, Lonnie. He bought these years ago. He has been dealing in aftermarket automotive parts for pretty much his whole life, right? Um, so he bought these when he seen them because he thought they were quite interesting. And uh, he had a spare set. So this is what we're going to use on this engine. So they have a rocker shaft that oils just like, you know, a regular Chrysler valve train. But what they also have is uh, adjustable rockers. So let me get this crap out of the way. And this is what you have. Get this unwrapped and I'll show you a little bit closer. So 
So this is kind of neat. You can see the quality here. So you have rollers inside here that roll on the shaft. And like I said, this is oiled. Then you also have a roller up here on your tip for the valve. And then you have an adjuster that goes on it, of course. And then uh, we were able to get, these are adapters that actually go with these. And basically, as you can see, it's got a push rod hole on the top of it here. So this eliminates this. It goes in place of that. And we'll work on our stock style push rods rather than using the cupped style push rod that this wants you to use. So kind of cool stuff. Okay, so here's the reality of aftermarket parts. So I've assembled these, right? And what I've noticed here is there is no movement of the rock arm because it's rubbing on the valve spring. So these are not going to work because we're going to end up with a whole bunch of shavings inside the oil pan. We're going to have to put stock ones on it.